the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Not quite pocketable anymore, unless you're wearing some like massive cargo pants, but then I suppose that's just a, a completely different issue you've got going on there. Anyway, I've literally just picked this up from Holden. We're just round the corner from Glossop, Holden than a company that supplies retailers with Blackmagic products. So this is like fresh out of the box. Now, I only have this for a few days. I didn't know it was coming at the time when it came. So I'm trying to scramble around to try and get some shots for you guys to show you what this thing can do. So anyway, in this video, I'm sure you've already heard all about this camera. It's really, really hyped up. I'm hoping that it's gonna be really worth the wait. What I'm going to do is show you all the shots that I've got from this over the next two days, do some comparison shots and basically talk you through the camera so you can get a flavour for what this thing is all about. So let's get to it. Now pretty much every shot you see in this video has come from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Obviously apart from the piece of the cameras I'm doing where you can see me holding that camera because that's been shot on my GH5S. And I've used the same lens for every shot. It's the Panasonic 12 to 35mm f2.8. So it should be pretty consistent across all the different environments. You know, no characteristics should really change with the lens. Now the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K shares the same micro four thirds mount as its predecessor. However, this time it actually has a micro four thirds sensor in there, as opposed to that smaller Super 16mm in the previous model. And this sensor is capable of capturing up to 13 stops of dynamic range. The Micro Four Thirds mount has been around for some time now and there's a plethora of quality lenses on the market and you can pretty much adapt any other lens to sort of work with this mount so it's very very versatile. But really one of the biggest talking points of this sensor is that it features a dual native ISO and that's rated at 400 and 3200. What this actually means is that there are effectively two bands in which the log curve sets itself and these two ISOs are in the middle of each of those bands. So the first band, from ISO 100 to 1000, you'll get 13.1 stops of maximum dynamic range. And then from 1250 to 25600, when the log curve resets itself to the next band, you'll get a mixture between 12.3 to 10.7 stops of dynamic range. It gradually gets lower as you increase the ISO. Now, the benefit of having this sort of system really does mean that you can capture the highest dynamic range possible across all of the ISO values. And some other things to note, I found the rolling shutter to be very minimal, and I've shot everything in the Blackmagic film profile, which is basically Blackmagic's log profile. Now let's talk about recording formats, because this is really where this camera excels. Internally, you can record 4K DCI with full pixel readout, might I add, at up to 60 frames per second. And that can be in various flavors of 10-bit ProRes, all the way up to uncompressed cinema DNG RAW. Now, if you want a more exaggerated slow motion effect, you can drop down to HD, and you can record up to 120 frames per second, but this is with a crop in. Recording media-wise, you've got three options. You can record all the resolutions and frame rates to either of the single SD or CFast card slots, providing that you're using a fast enough card, of course. Or, more interestingly, via the USB-C port on the side, you can actually plug in an SSD drive directly to the camera and record your footage to that. And what's nice is that these drives don't need any special formatting, so you can even edit from it if you wanted to. Now, I use my G-Technology G drive, this mobile SSD, and it worked flawlessly across all of the recording formats. In terms of physical buttons, if we start on the back, we've got a playback button, a main menu, a two times punch in, which is great for checking your focus whilst you're recording, and a high frame rate mode. Again, it's nice that you can instantly switch into high frame rate mode with a push of a button. So hopefully you don't miss that moment. Now, if you've not already noticed, I mean, you can't really not notice it. On the back, there's a five inch touch screen, and that's how you access everything in this menu, you know, to control the whole camera. It's not gonna compete with HDR, daylight, viewable external monitors. No, it's definitely not. If you're in bright sunlight, then you are gonna struggle, just like most other cameras at this sort of price point. But what it is, it is very sharp, it's very clear, and very, very responsive. You know, the operating system is exactly the same as Blackmagic's larger camera, the Ursa Mini, which makes switching between the two systems seamless. Now this camera uses a contrast detection autofocusing system. There's no continuous autofocus, but there is a touch focus. So you literally just tap on the screen and then it will try and hunt and find that focus point. To be honest though, 
I tried it for a few times and I didn't really like it. It's not something to really ride home about. You know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, it's just it's just not a great autofocusing system. So don't buy this camera if you're really set on <laughs> using autofocus um, because it is lacking. But for me, it's not something I find pivotal in a camera. 99% of the time, if not more, I am focusing manually. On the top, we've got three customizable function buttons, and I actually really like the default settings for these. I've got them to toggle on or off false color, my selected LUT, and my aspect ratio guys. So you know if you're gonna be finishing with a CinemaScope aspect ratio, I can at least overlay that so I know when I'm shooting what's gonna be in frame. On the left-hand side, we've got a three and a half mil jack input, and we've also got a headphone out. We've got a full-size HDMI port, a mains power connector, which is locking, which is quite nice. And you can also charge the internal battery through this power connection as well. And we've also got a mini XLR input so that you can connect you know, professional microphones and supply them with 48 volts of phantom power too, if it needs it. Now, one thing to know, out of the box, this camera doesn't come with a dedicated battery charger. You do have to charge that one supplied LP6 battery in the camera. And in my time shooting with it, you do only get around 50 minutes of shooting time, you know, if you're lucky. So you're gonna wanna get more batteries and a dedicated charger as soon as possible. And also, it doesn't come with that mini XLR to full XLR adapter either. On the front of the body as well, you've also got some fan vents. Now, a couple of questions I've seen people ask is how loud are these fans? And actually, not very loud at all. When you first power it up, you can hear the fans kick in, but as soon as it gets going, you know, they're just not audible anymore. So absolutely no issues in filming in very quiet environments where you're doing an interview and whatnot. And you know, you need very clean audio. That's just not a problem. Now, I always try and like to operate a camera handheld, especially when I'm doing sort of like, you know, portrait videos, showing someone do what they do, just because I think it makes it feel a bit more human. You know, obviously there's a time and a place with sticks and uh, sliders, gimbals, etc. But my style, I like to operate handheld. Now, one thing that I did notice is that I did miss having a sort of articulating screen. Now what that means is when you're filming, you know, relatively low to your body, it means you can't see the screen. And to see the screen, you have to extend your arms out. As soon as you do that, you're gonna compromise on stability. Obviously you wanna keep your elbows locked in and keep that camera as close to your body. Now also, there's not an EVF built into this camera. So if you're doing sort of eye level handheld shots, sometimes I like to put the camera right to my face, use my face as a third point of contact, also for filming outside, it means that I'm negating the dimmer screens that we get on cameras and I'm just using the EVF. And again, that's just something that you can't do with this camera. So, you know, it's all about compromise. At the end of the day, think of the price and, you know, you're not going to get all the bells and whistles at this sort of price point. However, saying all that, it is still very easy to shoot with handheld. It's very light and, you know, looking at the shots, I'm very pleased with what I've managed to capture. You know, this is just me rocking up and spending some time with these guys and filming them do what they do. So, you know, as a filmmaking tool, it helped me capture that. And I think that's all you can really ask for in a camera. Now, in terms of your onboard audio, you've got two built-in microphones at the front there, one on the left and one on the right. You've got individual controls of each, so you've basically got a stereo recording. Now, Blackmagic have shouted about how good that they think these internal mics are. You know, you've got a relatively low noise floor and also some pretty good wind reduction there. So we're filming right now by the side of this reservoir. It's obviously very exposed and open. It's very windy, actually. My eyes are watering now because the wind's just blasting at me here. And all we're using to record this is those internal mics so you guys can hear how they sound like. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pan the camera around because like I said, the wind is coming at me this way. So we pan that round. And now we're facing into the wind. So the wind is hitting those mics directly. This will give you an idea of the limitations or how good the audio sounds for, for yeah, built-in microphones. Okay, so maybe that was quite a harsh test. Of course, there was still some wind noise there, but you know, you've got to bear in mind there was zero protection against the wind that was added onto those mics. That is just the camera as it is out and about. So my two days filming with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K has now come to an end. And that's quite sad, really. I'm gonna have to give this back tomorrow when I get into the office. And I've actually enjoyed shooting with it much more than I thought I would. You know, it might not have all the bells and whistles of some of its competition, but when I say competition, I'm not talking about pure video cameras, I'm talking about you know, the hybrid cameras like GH5s, A7S's, etc. etc. When you compare it to them, yes, it might not have all those you know, features built into it, but what this does have is a very solid sensor, very robust codex, you know, 10-bit ProRes, all the way up to 12-bit lossless, and it also has a very clean OS. 
So I mean, what more could you ask for if you're looking for a filmmaking tool, especially at this sort of price point? I'm still struggling to understand how they've managed to make this thing so affordable uh, for what it can actually do. So yes, there are things that could be improved, but just think about the price and just think about the end image that you're able to capture with this camera. And also don't forget, straight out of the box, you get a little SD card that's got the activation key for DaVinci Resolve Studio. You know, that on its own is like 250 pounds. So together, you've got something that can capture beautiful imagery, and you've got something that can easily edit so you can get the most out of it, all in the one package at a price point that you're not really gonna beat, to be honest. But anyway, it looks like it's gonna tip it down soon, so I'm gonna make a move from here. You know, it's one of my favorite places to film, so I think you'll see more of these in videos. But anyway, if you do have any questions, do pop them in the comments. I will try and get back to you. And if you've not done so already, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you very much for watching.